It's a special edition of our first NBC update. Lenny Van Gilder, Ken Trahan. We switch seats this week because we are once again talking high school football playoffs. And Ken, as we look at the week one, we saw a few upsets with local teams as we head into this second week of the playoffs and you know, setting the stage for uh, you know everybody in action now. All the teams with buys last weekend will get ready to play, so it's, uh, it should be an interesting week, too. Well, it should be. As you mentioned, there were probably more good games last week than we thought there would be, frankly, and there were some mismatches, frankly, but now we're getting into what I would call the real playoffs. You weed out the 0-10s and the 1-9s and the 2-8s, you still got a couple of four-win teams and such involved, but uh, these are teams that are better than their records. Let's start with the divisions. In Division One, where five of the eight teams still remaining are area teams. Of course, eight of the ten teams when we started, I should say seven of the ten teams were area teams, but there were inevitably going to be two going home last weekend. Uh, you start at the top with the number one seed, St. Aug, against Jesuit, bringing back memories of the 1970s when basically what they did was uh, – Create the Superdome Classic as we know it now with that, that, that eventful night uh, back in December of 1978. But as you look at this game, clearly St. Aug has to have the edge. And really, as you, as you look at these matchups in Division One, St. Aug's the only higher seed for the New Orleans area. All the other teams are going to be on the road this weekend. Yeah, tough tests indeed. St. Augustine beat Jesuit by 21st time around. Uh, Jesuit's well coached. They'll keep themselves in this game, I do believe. Uh, you cannot pick against St. Augustine. I just think they have too much talent. And I do think they're on a mission, so have to like them there. Uh, Rummel goes to Scotlandville. That's a really good matchup. Scotlandville's huge. Big football team. They've only lost one game. Eric Randall, familiar name for LSU fans, the head coach there. Uh, Rummel's still got some injuries, but they've got Keith Fulton back, and if they play to their ability, they're a dangerous football team. Holy Cross is a Catholic. Intriguing matchup. Maybe the best one of all because this is one of those games that could be a toss-up. If Holy Cross plays the way they played up through the St. Aug game, they'll win. If they play the way they've played the last couple of weeks, Catholic High will beat them because Catholic High has Darius Geis, and he's really good, and they are playing well most recently. Shaw with a great win at St. Paul's. they got to go to Bird. That's a tough game. Bird's really good, and I think the long trip and the talent of Bird will probably prevail. Yeah, I'd be interested to watch those 4, 5, and 3, 6 matchups in Division One. As you look at Division Two, the only two local teams playing each other. St. Charles Catholic, John Curtis in a district rematch uh, on Friday night. I can hear Frank Monica right now. Why? Why? John Curtis. Absolutely. And we could be looking potentially a semifinal of John Curtis Evangel or maybe even John Curtis St. Thomas More, STM beat Evangel in the regular season there. The others, Parkview, Notre Dame, Turlings, and University. That's, that's a great bracket in Division Two. It really is. We jump ahead of Division Three. Four of the eight remaining teams are from the area. You had some upsets in this bracket a week ago. In fact, uh, several of them. The 9, the 10, and the 12 all beat higher-seeded teams going on the road to do so. Your thoughts on Division Three? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas draws the top seed unbeaten Episcopal. What a win for the Falcons last week, beating Riverside on the road. John White does a great job, and I don't sell them short. I think they'll play Episcopal tough. Uh, the Knights are at home, though. Slight edge, perhaps. Rematch game between Hannon and Pope John Paul II. District matchup, of course. Pope John Paul, big win over Holy Savior Menard. Archbishop Hannon's really good. Ziegler's a very good quarterback. Froba, a really good running back, and I like them to win on the road. North Lake Christian unbeaten at home against Catholic New Iberia. That's a tough draw. Catholic I think New Iberia is really good. Uh, they just demolished Lauraville a few weeks ago. North Lake Christian, of course, led by Joshua Rear, is a good football team, too. Maybe a slight edge at home, but that's a tough draw. And then as you look at Division Four, 16 teams left in this bracket. This is the, the one uh, of the select brackets that will actually play into the first weekend of December instead of taking the week off. And there's only one local team left, and that is, or actually two, if you will. Uh, well, no, the three-seed Country Day is the only local team left there. Yeah, they certainly are, and they haven't been past the regional round in 20 years since John White was a memorable quarterback there setting records. This could be their year. In 2010, they beat St. John in the by district round under the lights at home at Wenzel Field, and they're hoping that history repeats itself. And I think it will. St. John is 4-7. and seven. Now, they're better than their record because they've lost to higher classification teams. But I think this is the year that the Cajuns, uh, a very senior-laden team with 16 returning starters, breaks through. And again, you mentioned under the lights. The lights are coming in to, to Country Day on Friday night. That'll be fun to watch. 
Let's go on now to uh, to Class 5A, and there are six area teams still in play, and you had some uh, some interesting wins last week. Hanville on the road at Washita. John Errett, that unbelievable game uh, across the lake, 14 points in the last 30 seconds to beat Mandeville. Both of those, as a result, get home games this week. So does East St. John because Parkway cannot play at home, and Parkway is perhaps the best offensive team in the class, with all due apologies to Barb. So East St. John at home, that becomes a competitive game. East St. John's good on defense, but they've got to be because Parkway's so good on offense. Uh, tough to go against Parkway in that one. Covington on the road at East Ascension. Covington is capable of winning this game. Remember I said that. It's all about whether they show up. If the Covington team that beat St. Paul's, the Covington team that won last week shows up, they can win this game. Destrahan at home against Ruston. Ruston's are better than a 13th seed. They're physical, they're good, but Destrahan's at home. I like the Wildcats. John Errett, you mentioned a phenomenal comeback against Mandeville. We've got that one on WGSO 990 AM against Dutchtown. Dutchtown, Benny Sayah does a great job. They've won a couple of overtime thrillers this year. Uh, this is a really good football team. Who imposes their will? They both want to run the ball. I think it's an even type of game. Hanville at home against Barb. Last year, Hanville lost by three at home to Parkway in this round. Hanville's playing better than expected. They're much better than their record. Dylan Keller playing well, and they can run the ball on Barb, but they can possess the ball and have the rumble plan of last year. They have a real chance to pull an upset, but Barb's so good offensively. And then Ponchatoula at Acadiana, there might be 80 to 100 points scored in this game. Christian Campbell of the Green Wave, really good at quarterback. Hank Tierney does a great job, but Acadiana is so tough to stop. So got to like the Wrecking Rams in that one. As you look to 4A, the seed's basically held in the first round with one notable exception, and that's the 20 seed North DeSoto. Uh, Coach Salt at East Jefferson ends up uh, drawing the short straw, if you will, there, and he's the one high seed that has to travel in round two. All the teams that have been in the Dome in recent years are alive here. The Nevilles, the Cars, the Franklintons, of course, on and on. But the thing that gets your attention is that District 10 4A. It's so good uh, when you look at these teams that are all still alive. And Edna Carr and Landry Walker and, and obviously Bell Chase, who has speed. Uh, those are really good football teams. Bell Chase gets Warren Easton a second time this year. Easton has the size. And Bell Chase has the speed. Good matchup. I like Easton uh, to win again, although close. East Jefferson on the road, long trip to North DeSoto. That's the only problem for them, but I sure do like their team. Their defense so fast. Landry Walker at home against LaGrange. Good athletes on the field. LaGrange is a good team, but I like Landry Walker. Franklinton at home against Northwood of Shreveport. I like Franklinton's offense. And Edna Carr on a Thursday night special against Crowley at home. I sure do like the Cougars to advance there. As you look at Class 3A, just one local team still around, and that's A. Mead, who has to travel to West Feliciana. Your thoughts on a 3A bracket? I think A. Mead has a real shot in this game on the road. They're one of my upset specials. If they play to their ability, I think they get the upset in that game. Otherwise, as you mentioned, LaRanger is the only other team from this area that's alive. LaRanger is at Patterson. I did a Patterson game earlier this year. They're very good on offense. Uh, LaRanger had a great year last year. Not as good this year, but they're still capable. That's a pretty good matchup, uh, although I would take Patterson slightly in that game. And then Donaldsonville extending outward a little bit close to home at home against Church Point. Uh, that would be an upset if they could beat Church Point, who's a good football team. Donaldsonville pulled an upset a week ago at 25, beating an 8 in the first round. Class 2A, you got to start with talking about St. James. Uh, a great turnaround story here. A 22 seed went on the road to beat Lake Arthur, the 11 in the first round. Now they get a home game against the 6 seed Sterlington. Well, they screwed it up with Rick Gailey, obviously, and they really screwed it up. And now they've gotten it right because Dwayne Jenkins, who came from Lutcher, is a really good football coach, and it's obvious that a coach makes a difference. Same players, and they win four games this year, and they get to the playoffs, and they win around in the playoffs, and they're at home. Now, Sterlington probably has better personnel, but I certainly wouldn't sell St. James Shore. They scored 47 a week ago. And then Carver has to go a long way to Winfield, the protagonists of the split. And Carver's good offensively. They're good enough offensively to make this a competitive game. Hard to pick against Winfield at home. Absolutely. And then as you look at Class 1A, two teams that had buys a week ago from our area opening up this week in Kentwood against Oberlin, West St. John against Elton. And I like both to win. Kentwood and West St. John are two of the four best teams in the class. Ignore whatever the seeds say. I think they're three and five. They're two of the four best teams. West St. John lost to Haynesville in a thriller last year on the road in the semis. Kentwood lost, of course, in the same round, and they're really good. So I think both are going to win. But ultimately, Haynesville is the team to beat. Well, when we are done with this weekend, there will be 
oh, 60 teams remaining in the playoffs. Eight and six of the brackets will be down to four and three of the brackets as we continue to count down to the Dome December 12th, 13th, and 14th. And there's no other place to be than SportsNola.com to get all the latest news, all the scores. Uh, you can watch Ken Trahan's original prep football report from the studio. Of course, Ken will be out on the road this week uh, with that broadcast uh, of the game from Haas Memphis. But still, the place you want to be to get all your coverage on Friday night is right here at SportsNola.com.